economist's definition of an entrepreneur. One who brings resources, labor materials, and other assets into combination that make their value greater than before and also induces change, innovation, and new order. Being an entrepreneur not only allows you to fulfill your dream, but also in the process you can reward yourself both in personal satisfaction, in the ability to help others, and also monetary. There's the psycholo psychological definition that it's a person driven by certain forces that the needs to obtain or attain something, to experiment, to accomplish, or perhaps escape authority of others. If you look at many of the successful entrepreneurs over the history of the world, they didn't just stop and create one thing. They may went on and had multiple other businesses. They created it, passed it on, and started something new. And these people are people that are driven by wanting to do that. Entrepreneurship is a dynamic process of creating potential incremental wealth, either for yourself or for others, by creating the resources and jobs. The biggest thing that you do as an entrepreneur, besides being your own boss, is you're willing to accept risk, to accept the risk of potential failure. But your time, your effort, and your sweat provides a value of a product to service and also rewarding you financially. The product or service may or not be new or unique also. Many entrepreneurs have taken common things and created something, you know, better or different. Look at Uber. Look at Lyft. We had taxis. We had people doing this. What did they do? They revolutionized the way that we can actually access this type of travel. Many people have reinvented many things. If you think to yourself where you practice pharmacy, whether it's in a hospital setting or a community pharmacy, in today's healthcare, there is lots of ripe opportunities to change the common norm of these practices. Where do entrepreneurs come from? A lot of them may grow up in family businesses. Doesn't necessarily mean that they follow in the same family business, but they have that drive, that spirit that's passed on from parent to, to son or daughter. A lot of many of our entrepreneurs have been immigrants who, you know, who came to this country or others wanting to better themselves. Most entrepreneurs have higher education, maybe not always a college degree, but most entrepreneurs have wanting to seek to learn to better themselves. Most entrepreneurs are not just are not young where they start right out the bat, although there are many success stories, as we know, of young entrepreneurs, startup dot com companies. But the average highest group of entrepreneurs happen later in life, people that have learned from their experiences. And that is one of the things I hope in this course that we do is help to give you those experiences of learning about what it takes to be an entrepreneur to discover your spirit even at a younger age. Many of you may have a drive to own your own business or create something new for the pharmacy profession. And you may think that that's not going to happen or that's light years away. But this course and the next one is designed for you to start thinking through that process and also coming up with a battle plan of when I graduate. No, I may not be able to start this tomorrow, right when I graduate, but I can start developing goals of when and how I'm going to reach that. What are some key things that can make you successful as an entrepreneur? Entrepreneurs don't just wing it. They're planners. They also don't settle for no. They have a desire to achieve. They're also very optimistic. We all can get pessimistic. We can all look at things that we believe that are wrong, especially in pharmacy and in healthcare. But most successful entrepreneurs take what may look like 
problems and create opportunities there. Most entrepreneurs are nurturing and compassionate attitudes, hard workers, willing to accept responsibility both when they succeed and when they fail. They're also profit oriented. You cannot be successful entrepreneur if you do not have a good business plan of how you're going to fund your business, how you're going to make payroll for your employees of your business, and how you're going to grow your business. Because whether you get loans from the bank or investors, eventually those investors or banks want their money paid back. So you need to be profit-oriented in order to be able to pay off your debt. Most entrepreneurs don't rest on their laurels. They are always looking at ways that they can self-improve. This quote to the right of the slide is one of my favorite quotes. And this quote may, if you sit back, does it describe you? That there's going to be hardship you may have to sacrifice. The one thing that's still good in pharmacy is when you graduate, you will start with a decent salary when you get a job. And you may be eager to take that decent salary and acquire things, house, car. But if you have a dream to be an entrepreneur, you may be a little bit more, you know, you know, budget-wise, a, a little bit more frugal in how you're going to spend your money so that maybe you can someday start your own business or acquire a business and be able to take that acquired business and make it your own with your new entrepreneur ideas. And this quote goes like this, an entrepreneur is living a few years of your life like most people won't with sacrifice so that someday when you do find success, you can spend the rest of your life like most people can't. It doesn't mean that you go lock yourself in an ivory tower and count your money of all your success. That doesn't what makes and drives entrepreneurs. But you can be able to take your hard work to be able to provide for your friends, your family, your community, and to live comfortably. The question in 2019, are entrepreneur companies relevant today? especially with all the big boys out there like Google, Apple, Amazon, CVS, Caremark. Is there entrepreneurship still in pharmacy? Can you do that? My answer to that is yes. In fact, if there's ever been a time crying for new innovation, entrepreneurship in pharmacy is needed. Now this semester, I will use the acquiring, the managing, and purchasing of a community pharmacy as the baseline. Does that mean that your business plan next semester has to be, I want to go buy my own community pharmacy? It can. But even those who want to do that, I challenge them that be able to survive. And I can share with my current businesses, for us to be in existence in the next five years, we're in the process of changing our business model and how we are going to still be able to take care of our patients in our community and also still be profit oriented that we can take care of our employees and stay in business. So why would you want pharmacy ownership, which comes along with entrepreneurship? Well, you may have a passion to want to take care of people. That is my main reason why I went into pharmacy is that I watched growing up in my family pharmacy what my father did with the people that came in there. Both him and my mother who worked by his side were taking care of patients in our community. And one of the things I got an opportunity to do when I was still in pharmacy school, I attended the National Community Pharmacy Association's very first pharmacy ownership course. And I went there and there was a gentleman from a professor from Tennessee and he was referring to a book by Michael Lee Booth. And this book was about what do customers want and how do we keep them? And he had this quote that still has stuck with me all these years later. 
and that's this. Whatever business, whatever entrepreneur idea you have, does it answer two questions? Does it help customers feel good? And does it help solve their problem? If you can answer those two questions for your business, you're going to be successful. Owning your own business, being an entrepreneur, may help you focus on an area of interest you have, maybe a more narrow geographic niche. Um, maybe you want to, you know, be able to give back to your community. So there's lots of opportunities that you can still have with pharmacy ownership. If you look at the history of innovation in pharmacy, it all originated not from the big chains, not from the big companies, but the small independent companies that were entrepreneur in spirit. The very first IV pharmacies, parental nutrition came from independence. The very first specialty pharmacies that came into existence. CVS Caremark that's located here in Pittsburgh was an evolution of a small pharmacy called Statlanders that had an idea of how can I help patients who can't find transplant drugs when they come to Pittsburgh and have their transplant. This started in the late 80s and evolved into what we now modernly know as specialty pharmacy. Entrepreneurs in pharmacy were the first ones to develop medication profiles, have computers in the pharmacy, looking at you know ways to take care of patients in nursing homes, prison settings. These are all were pharmacy independent owner entrepreneurs. Another thing to think about is, well, is small business still relevant today once again with all those big companies that I mentioned? The fact is, yes. Our backbone of this of our success of our comp, of our country resides on small business. 87% of all US businesses employ fewer than 20 employees. A lot of those are restaurants, mind you, but a lot of them are other industries like pharmacies. Greater than 30% of all workers are in businesses with 20 employees. 56% of workers are in businesses with less than 100 employees. And these businesses are able to meet customer needs better because they don't have a lot of managerial overhead Decisions can be made quickly. They can be a lot more nimble in making changes when the industry demands it. Other facts are 60% of firms who successfully export abroad are small businesses. The number of small businesses has grown by 40% since 1990s. In the 1970s, approximately 1,000 students were enrolled in entrepreneur classes. Today, there are thousands and thousands at hundreds of schools. But what about in pharmacy schools? If you ask older pharmacists, you ask people 40, 50 years ago, a good portion of those went into owning their own business. But in the late 90s, early 2000s, that really wasn't the case. We actually saw a decrease in independent type of pharmacy businesses. And a lot of that was difficult, you know, that it was a challenging field at the time. There was a lot of chains popping up and the industry was being squeezed due to third party control. A lot of that may not have changed in 2019, but I'm seeing a more revival of people wanting to not work for large companies take their control of their destiny and pharmacy schools have been slowly over the years promoting how to teach those who are interested about pharmacy ownership and that is why close to 10 years ago here at Duquesne University myself and some others decided that we needed to create an entrepreneur program here in the School of Pharmacy. So, this semester, 
my goal is for you to be able to explore, you know, who are entrepreneurs in pharmacy? How did they come from? Are they born or made? What is the right time that I should do this? And probably my answer to that one is going to be very generically is the right time is when you'll know it. It doesn't have to be 20 years from now or 10 years from now. And I know a lot of you are thinking, oh, I got student loans. How am I ever going to do that? If you want to do it, you can. You know, I, I when I graduated pharmacy school, I thought I was just going to go back home, work in the business. And I had a dream that I wanted to maybe do something different in clinical. So after two years of working as a pharmacist, I made the commitment to go back to school full time, which made me having to cut my salary, work part time, work part time where I worked every weekend for two years, actually maybe three when I did my residency. And there are many that do that, wanting to meet their dream. Many of you are doing that depending upon, you know, you know, with your schooling right now, you can make it happen. And, you know, there are not one formula of how to do it, but we, what we hope to do this semester is to give you those tools. You want to assess your personal environmental attributes. You want to look at what is the advantage of wanting to own and operate and how do I project what is needed for a business to be successful in pharmacy now and in the future so what I hope to teach you this semester is the skills to be able to problem solve and to own your own business because a lot of the topics we talk about today, this semester, next semester, may not be true five years from now, as the writer Jacob Neusner quoted in the book Soundings. Many things that you haven't heard today may be important in five or ten years ahead. A good entrepreneur is always looking at what are the next future opportunities. And so what I hope to teach you this semester, and you can read the rest of the quote here on your own, is the basic skills of what you need in terms of business planning, marketing, acquiring good employees, assessing the value of maybe acquiring a business, developing your niche, what is needed that will make my business unique and people would want to go to my business versus others. So there are eight questions I'd like you to ask yourself before becoming an entrepreneur. What are my motivations be behind becoming an entrepreneur? What are my true intentions? These need to be strong because there are going to be tough times. There are going to be times where you fail. There are going to be times where you think you're not going to be able to make payroll or even pay yourself. And in those rough times, do you still have the motivation and spirit to keep it going? Do you have a personal vision? In order for things to go smoothly, our personal and professional lives need to be in a comfortable alignment. Your business ventures need to incorporate what you love to do, what you enjoy, who you are. The purpose of wanting to be your own boss, to be an entrepreneur, is you want to do it your way. There are times, based on government regulations, rules, and things, we still have to conform. But you need to have that vision of what can I do. When you're making a conscious decision to become an entrepreneur, you need to make sure that your personal vision has a place for that business and can make adjustments if needed. Because this business is going to be part of you. It is not a 40-hour week. It is a week of whatever it takes to get the job done. Does it mean that you won't be able to enjoy life, have a family, be successful? No. Most successful entrepreneurs learn how to task management, know how to delegate, know how to plan. But it's still going to take a lot of hard work because when you put your head down at night, you'll get to sleep 
but it's not like leaving a job where it's somebody else's responsibility. A big question you need to ask is whoever is in your life, in your family, whether it's your close family, your spouse, your significant other, how will they feel about me starting a business? How will my support circle feel about this? And this is so important for this to be successful. Do I have the right personality? Not everybody is capable of being a great entrepreneur. And, and that's not a sign of failure. Some people like working for other people. And some people are still very good. They're very good at ideas. They're very good at management. But great ideas and passion don't always mean a successful entrepreneur. You need to have some characteristics. And are these naturally innate born traits? Not necessarily. They may be traits that you have that you may develop over time. Your ability to think, to look to the future, to plan. Your ability to communicate your ideas, whether to investors, to your employees, to motivate them, to your customers that you want to utilize your business. Your technical ability of how to be able to put a business together. Your human relations ability, no matter what, you're only as successful as the people, you know, who work for you. And that drive, do you have that drive that every day you want to make it better? Do I have a clear business idea? My idea should be clear and well-defined. This is what we are going to do this semester, but if you continue on to next semester, that is the goal, to help you come up with a clear and well-defined. Start defining your concepts. That is why we will have the individual meetings this semester, so get to hear what those are. And sometimes you just got to throw every one of them on, on, on the wall and see which ones stick, which ones you have more passion. For your business idea needs to be what you want to do. What services or products are you going to be involved in? What are the advantages you have that will benefit the business you'll provide? Another one, and I ask this to students all the time, what would I like to do for the rest of my life? When you think of your ideal work, what comes to mind? Was there something you always wanted to do but didn't get the chance to follow through? You will want to connect your ideals. I ask this when I meet with every student. Because if you don't love what you do and you can't marry the two together, you're not going to be successful as an entrepreneur. Because you're going to want to wake up those days, even when they're tough days, because it's your business. Now, a lot of times I meet many people who say, you know what, I want to be want to own my own business and unfortunately when you're in pharmacy school we do teach you business just like this elective but we're also trying to survive pharmacy school so we can become the best pharmacist so pharmacy knowledge always kind of weighs out over business knowledge but you have to be able to put those two together what about my finances will I have enough to start We'll talk about what will it take to start up a business, and every business is a little bit different. What is some startup capital? Even if you're going to go to a bank or an investor, they're going to want you to have some skin in the game. Does that mean that i got to save to have all of it? No. Do you save all of it when, when somebody goes to buy a house or a car? No. But you need to have a good business plan to show you're going to have the ability to pay back that loan or that investment in addition, grow that you're going to make a decent salary over time. If you look at community pharmacies, most community pharmacies to start cold can be tough in today's environment. But most businesses, regardless if it's a traditional community pharmacy business or any other style type of business, usually takes about 12 to 8 months to break even. So you do need that funding to get you through those early hard times. And most businesses for them to mature take two to three years to see decent profits. There's lots of different sayings in entrepreneurship and I've given you many quotes already 
but just kind of look look through these quotes and think to yourself, how does that fit into my idea of being an entrepreneur? Output should exceed input. That if I'm going to put in all this hard work and time, I hope to reap the benefits and rewards of it, both monetary and personal goals of maybe contributing to my community, seeing my employees to be successful. We have not fulfilled our obligations to the public if we fail. Your goal is to want to bring the best product or service to the market. Just go out and do it. Doing things in a simple way, regularly, never neglecting to do them. Successful people are doing the common things uncommonly well. Through the fear of failure, some people create their own hell. You can't be afraid to fail. But through good planning, good business planning, you can be able to burden a lot easier failure if you plan appropriately, both organizational-wise, strategically, and financially. And we'll be discussing all three this semester. Entrepreneurs focus on building a service or industry for their clients. These are things that are developing. Community pharmacy, for it to survive, has to go away from being a product-driven type of business, even though it's going to take some time, to being a more service industry. There is room for many innovators in the industry, and we will be talking over the weeks different ideas for the future of pharmacy. What are areas you think might be? successful for pharmacy. As I said before, pharmacy entrepreneurs were the first to provide many of these services and have done very well in doing so. So you want to start thinking to yourself today and in the weeks to come. Am I a self-starter? How do I feel about others? Do I have leadership qualities? And don't sell yourself short. Trust me, if you looked at me 20 to 25 years ago, I would have said I could never have been a professor, a leader, an owner, a manager, a director. Can you take responsibility? Are you a good organizer? Are you a good worker? Hard working skills is what makes a successful entrepreneur. Also, can you make a decision? Sometimes we have to make hard decisions. Sometimes we have to make a decision no matter what. Can people trust what you say? You're going to be leading people and managing the business for those people to be successful. Can you stick with it? And are you healthy? You want to make sure that you are healthy and have the ability to take on this journey. Because this journey sometimes can be stressful and hard, but it can be very rewarding too. As I said, as you begin your entrepreneur, you know, exploration for a career, you know, you can have inboard traits, but we can learn these through schooling, by working for others who are entrepreneurs, and start working for companies that will teach you how to succeed. There's many books and we will refer to many different readings this semester of the entrepreneur method. There are organizations. And the other thing, too, I encourage to be around those who are positive, who are always trying to think big on how I can be successful. Just to share you a couple of facts of reflecting on the industry of independent pharmacy, which is where a lot of entrepreneurs came from in the pharmacy world, is independent pharmacy is far from dead. Even though at times it may seem bleak, you may hear of classmates who are working for independents, or you may work one for yourself. But Pennsylvania, in terms of states, if you decide you want to continue to reside here, is ranked in the top five of states with independent pharmacy. A lot of successful independent pharmacy businesses are located, yes, in there's concentrations around the two biggest cities of our state, Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, 
but a lot of successful entrepreneurs are also in the rural suburban areas. Independent pharmacies are still alive and well dispensing prescriptions annually. And the challenge that independent pharmacy has, and this is why entrepreneurs are needed in this area, is that right now 92% of the revenue is tied to prescriptions. And I will share this throughout the semester. One of the challenges we have is the reimbursement on prescriptions has made it very challenging. However, lots of independents are looking at innovative ways to do the, to be successful and change that business model. Over 25% of independent owners have ownership in two or more pharmacies. A lot of times the key niche, I think, is those who own three but no more than five pharmacies. Independent pharmacies offer a wide range of patient services, and those services you'll hear me discuss in Pharmacy Practice 6. I'll talk about them during this course, but there's opportunity now and even more down the road that pharmacies can get paid for those services. Another opportunity is if you want to get into this business quicker, 50% of pharmacy owners are over the age of 50. Many of them may not be yet ready to retire, but they're looking for exit plans of what they can do to pass on their hard work to future entrepreneur pharmacy owners. The future is evolving for pharmacy. As you've heard many times from me and other professors, there's been a great emphasis on measuring quality. With this measurement change in quality, there is a goal of paying healthcare providers based on their value that they bring. And those healthcare providers, physician, health system, and practices need somebody to help solve some of these problems because a lot of these problems are medication related. So successful pharmacies of today are being seen by combining excellent customer service and access to health care type of services that help improve health outcomes by lowering patients' overall health care costs. Troy Trigestad, who is a pharmacist and economist, who is um, the lead director for the National Pharmacy Care Network, CPSN, has this great quote, As long as you're providing value in the next 10 years in health care, you'll be fine. And so if you can create a business that provides value, there are opportunities for you to make money at that, to be able to be a successful business owner. Places that have evolved over the years have been immunization programs, adherence programs, MTM service type of programs. And with the development of these pharmacy care networks, there's even greater opportunity for pharmacies to get paid differently than the traditional way of dispensing a prescription. Is there any monetary award of owning my own business? When you start out, the one thing you will do in pharmacy, you'll start out with a decent salary. But what happens a lot, especially right now in pharmacy, there's not incremental increases in that salary year to year unless you decide to go up the management pathway in the chain or hospital industry. However, by owning your own business, and one of the things we're going to talk about this semester is financial analysis and budgeting and planning of a business, you have the opportunity to double or even more than double your take-home pay. So that hard work and sweat can help with that. So a successful independent pharmacy type of practice, what can it do? Greater job security. You may ask, well, how can it be greater job security with all the pressures going on in pharmacy? If you're a good entrepreneur, a good planner, a good organizer, a good visionary, a hard worker, not a fail, afraid of failure, you're always going to have a job. If you do all those hard works, there is great financial reward. And there's personal reward. It's the freedom 
to practice pharmacy your way, to see your ideas come into existence. It's also an opportunity to become a big member of the community, to give back to your community. You can expand and grow when opportunity arises. And the most important, you get the satisfaction of seeing your ideas come into existence through your actions and your decisions. So how can I get started in pharmacy ownership? Well, there's three paths. You can start a new practice. This semester, we'll talk about what financial resources does it take to get there. You could buy an existing pharmacy, and we'll talk about ways you can do that through things called junior partnerships. Or you could be lucky and maybe inherit one, but that's not always lucky. What type of pharmacy business do you want? Do you want it to be community-based? Do you want it to be institutional-based, like hospital or long-term care? Do you look at this as a consulting company? Is this a company that has some type of new technology or software? So during this semester and next, you want to analyze how do current pharmacy businesses make money? How do other people in the healthcare world, how do they make money? What laws are changing that may give opportunities for pharmacy to make money and develop a business? One of the key components we're going to talk about this semester is the development of a business plan. And we'll go over everything from, you know, the legal structure to the product mix, the service mix, to the organizational structure, and what you need to do 